Mike Movisonko is a very smart politician. And Mike Sonko is also a very shrewd politician. And you can't rule out the possibility of Mike Sonko becoming the next governor for Mombasa or even a future presidential candidate in this country. For those who follow the politics of this country, In December 2019, Mike Movie Sonko was arrested in Voi. And after that arrest, Mike Sonko was airlifted to Nairobi after the DPP issued warrant of arrest over some 370 million scandal. That day marked the beginning of the end of Mike Sonko in Nairobi. And most people predicted that Mike Sonko was going to fall, but he won't rise again. So around March 2020, you know, he was arrested in Voy in December 2019. So in March 2020, President Ru Kenyatta created the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Mike Sonko and Eugene Wamalo actually penned that document. Mike Sonko later on claimed that he didn't read the document. Again, once the Nairobi Metropolitan Services was created, most people ruled out the possibility of Mike Sonko making a comeback because majority of the functions and services which were previously being performed by the Nairobi County Government were transferred to the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. So Mike Sonko was, then became just a governor with the, uh, without portfolio. So that was in March. Then in December, that same year, Mike Sonko was finally impeached. But Mike Sonko had avoided any temptation of appointing a deputy governor. Because he knew that by appointing a deputy governor, he would be impeached and a new governor would take over. So he, he, he avoided a situation where a deputy governor was going to be in place. So he kept on suggesting names. Migona, suggesting another name, Kananu. So after he was impeached, <laughs> that was in December, it took one year, up to November 2021, for An Kananu to be actually sworn in as the governor for Nairobi. So the moment An Kananu was sworn in as the governor for Nairobi, all avenues for Sonko's comeback were closed. Then in January 2022, just January this year, Mike Sonko opened a multi-million club in Mombasa. Most people, including myself, interpreted that move to mean that Mike Sonko was actually now transitioning from politics to club or entertainment. Then from nowhere, Mike Sonko announced that he was going to run in Mombasa. But he had a challenge. Mike Sonko still had that impeachment because the law is very clear. You can't be cleared to run when you are impeached. So he had that case ongoing. And of course, he had gone to up to the Supreme Court pursuing that. So Mike Sonko, being a smart politician, monitored the situation. And Mike Sonko realized three things. The first thing which Mike Sonko realized was that President Ru Kenyatta was so keen on having Raila Mulodinga as the next president of the Republic of Kenya. So at some point, he aligned himself, then withdrew. So he realized that for me to succeed, 
I must align myself with Raila Odinga. And then I can also withdraw at some, at some point. But this guy is serious on Raila Odinga becoming the next president. Then the second thing Mike Sonko realized was that President Ruhi Kenyatta and probably the deep state had big interest in Nairobi. And therefore making political comeback in Nairobi was out of equation for Mike Sonko. <laughs> then after Kalo, after Mudavadi and Weta joined Ruto, Mike Sonko realized the third thing. That President Ruhi Kenyatta and Raila Odinga desperately needed the support of Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka. Being a smart guy, he then went to Kalonzo and poured money. Started moving around the country with Kalonzo. Kalonzo started seeing crowd he had never witnessed in his pol entire political life. When Kalonzo went to Mombasa with Sonko, he saw something which he had never seen as a Wiper party leader running under the banner of Wiper. Then he pumped money in Wiper. Because his target was Uru Kenyatta. Uru Kenyatta wanted Kalonzo. So Sonko went to Kalonzo and managed to take control of Kalonzo. <laughs> That's how ultimately Mike Sonko was cleared. The fact of the matter is that after that debate, pitting Igabe and Sakaja, Sakaja's ratings went up. And President Luke Nyata, also being keen on Raila Odinga, realized that he needed something. He needed to bring on board Mike Sonko. And because Mike Sonko realized that, and the need to have Kalonzo, Kalonzo was also putting demands that, for me, I'm coming, but Mike Sonko must be the governor, must run, not really be the governor, must run in Mombasa. Because Sonko had convinced him, you need four governors. Mombasa, there's a chance. The Kitui governor, is, 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 uh, there's a chance. Machakos, there's a chance. And then the Kitui. So Mombasa was one of the conditions. And because deep state is deeper than deep, <laughs> Mike Movisonko was cleared. So Mike Sonko is currently a candidate in Mombasa because he managed to game the system. But the next question which majority of Kenyans are asking is the implication of Mike Sonko's entry in Mombasa. Remember, Mike Sonko made a technical appearance or a, an appearance with Raila and Karua where he was uh, welcomed into the Azimio. Then he went and appeared again together with President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta in that public rally. And for the first time, he was given a chance to speak during that particular rally. That, in my view, is what changed everything. So this other matter of controlling were just a mere formalities. Mike Sonko also realized that IBC had committed a mistake by clearing Sakaja. By clearing Sakaja, and in any a chance would have made a totally different thing that IBC were favoring the other guy because they had cleared Sakaja, they had cleared uh, the, the Kiambu senatorial candidate, the UDA Kiambu senatorial candidate. Therefore, they also had no option. So Mike Sonko being smart also realized that. But what is the implication of Mike Sonko's bid in Mombasa? That's the most important question. The fact that Sonko is running means, and is running on Wiper, it means that the ODM dominance in Mombasa is being put to test. Raila Odinga was in Mombasa yesterday. The rally was massive. And he had a message to the people of Mombasa. Vote six piece. The target of that statement by Raila Odinga 
was actually Mike Sonko if you ask me. Because Mike Sonko is coming with his kind of populist politics, pro people, and then the Bara mentality is likely to rally those people. And because of the level of poverty in the coastal region, Mike Sonko will be able to even penetrate the Mijikenda. So th those are the facts. So the ODM dominance in Mombasa, should Mike Sonko win, is going to be put to test. So the question is, is Raila Odinga going to allow Sonko to win in Mombasa? Because the next day we will see a rally, major rally, held by Raila Odinga in Mombasa with the possibility of Mike Sonko joining. What will happen? So, that's the first implication. The second implication, and I think this is where Raila Odinga needs Sonko, is the Kamba voting block. Raila Odinga, William Ruto, both these guys would not want a case where they go for a runoff. And the only way to avoid runoff is the Kamba votes now. Kamba votes, if Ruto will manage to get substantial, will be good for him. Raila Odinga would want to reach the same level he reached in the last election. So with Kalonzo and Sonko now together, it means there's a, that potential of Raila Odinga achieving what he achieved in the last election in Ukambani. <laughs> so the truth of the matter is that Sonko will be key in mobilizing the votes for Raila Odinga, the Kamba votes. I'll be waiting to see his first public appearance together with Raila and probably President Ruhu Kenyatta. But the target would be Kamba voting block. So that's the implication. The third thing here is the hustler narrative. You know, President Ruhu Kenyatta and Raila Odinga are running as reform team. William Ruto is running as a hustler. When Sonko was with President Ruhu Kenyatta, he was very clear that is the real hustler, that the other one is fake. So if you put Ruto and Sonko on a scale, who do you think is the real hustler? Who do you think will appeal to the ordinary, the common man? Takes, let's say you take Sonko to Kondele and you take Ruto to Kondele. Or you take Sonko to Mkuru and you take Uhuru, I mean, Ruto to Mkuru. Who do you think will attract majority of the hustlers down there? Sonko has a way. And that's why Uhuru Kenyatta needs him to dismantle that hustler narrative. So the moment Sonko will start appearing for these rallies and will be dismantling the hustler narrative, Ruto will be done. And the, third, the fourth implication, in my view, which most people have not realized, is that Sonko coming to Azimio is kind of a reunion with Martha Karwa. Mike Sonko was first elected as a member of parliament for Makadara. And that election marked the beginning of the rise of Mike Sonko. He contested under NAC Kenya. For those who followed politics at that time, Raila Odinga also sponsored a candidate. That candidate was defeated by Mike Sonko, Ruben Dolo. So it means Mike Sonko coming again with the Martha Karwa working together. And the other day he was very clear that it is only Martha Karwa who embraced him when he joined politics as a woman, of all the women politicians. So it's kind of a reunion. So it means he's going to play some role in Azimio. Sonko would be comfortable with Martha Karwa becoming the next deputy president because whatever he wants, he can get through Martha Karwa. And lastly, the youthful voting block. This is where Sonko is coming handy. The youth of this country are very interesting voting population. Mike Sonko has mastered their voting patterns, their behavior, and he behaves in a way that resonates so well with them. So if Ruto is, is backing on the, youth, um, on the voting block, what Uhuru and Raila are doing, in my view, is that they are going to unleash Joho to appeal to the youth. They are going to unleash Sabina Chege to appeal to the youths. They are going to unleash 
make movies songko to appeal to the youths they are going to unleash babu wino they are going to unleash in kisi simba arati and remember the same same youths are being persuaded by another gentleman wajakoya and wajakoya is only eating the block which belongs to ruto so that youth voting block is what these guys are are trying to shield away from ruto i don't know what you think that's my take in case you are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two click this sub the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and the subscribers i want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support without that support this channel cannot be where it is thank you guys